Hello friends, how are you today? In this video, we are going to see the generative AI and how it can fit in with the enterprise architecture and what kind of benefit as an enterprise we are going to get out of this generative AI. I'm not going in detail about generative AI, but I'm going to show you how this generative AI can fit in with the enterprise architecture. So for this, what I did, I created an enterprise architecture diagram and fit in this generative AI in that architecture. And I'm going to explain to you in detail. So hope you can see my screen. So this is the architecture I came up with. So basically, the architecture talks about uh, the user details. Um, so the user may be the customer representative or different types of user who are using different devices or the mobile user, right? So if you take an example of uh, e-commerce application, this type of user will come into picture and your e-commerce uh, front end layer may run in on premises or it may be an IoT device or it can run in any public cloud. So once the user logs into the system or the customer representative enters some details into the system, these details um, in the form of data will get fed into the middle layer, which is running on the hybrid cloud platform. So why we chose hybrid cloud platform here? Because based on the criticality of your uh, application, you can either deploy your application in the public cloud or in the private cloud. And you can use this hybrid cloud platform to manage uh, both the applications which are running in public and private cloud. And similar to that, uh, you can uh, deploy your databases either in the public cloud and private cloud, depending on the criticality of the data that you maintain. So that's why I showed here uh, public cloud and uh, private cloud for the data to run. And uh, once uh, the user logs in, he or she start generating the data, and that data will get put into the databases. And then um, here, here this is the critical part for any generative AI tools and technology. The data is the main source for any generative AI tools and technology. So here in this case, um, the customer data will get stored in different types of data sources. All you need to do is just take this data, curate this data, and feed into the generative AI tools and technology. And again, this generative AI can run in public cloud or private cloud. And uh, you can manage this generative AI tool by using this hybrid cloud um, technology like Red Hat OpenShift. So now you got the data uh, fed into this uh, generative AI. Now the generative AI learns the data, processes the data, and produces a business value output in the form of text or image or audio or 3D model or video. Okay. So this is totally different from the large language model that will produce only text as the output, but generative AI will produce different types of um, output, okay? So you might have got an idea of how you can fit in this generative AI in your enterprise architecture. Now I'm going to take two examples and explain this architecture in a simple way. So suppose if you are running a transportation uh, company, the transportation company transports the goods from one place to another place, you may have truck drivers who travel from one city to another city, right? So imagine that you have a transportation company and you are transporting goods from one location to another location and truck drivers, truck and truck uh, performance, driver performance or the input um, and that will be fed into any of these uh, front end systems and uh, that data will get uh, passed to this middle layer wherein the middle layer process those data in terms of the transportation system, the location details, the map route details and also the driver performance and uh, the vehicle performance details all will uh, be processed with these um, applications right so based on the criticality of the application you can deploy either in the public cloud or private cloud and uh, use the hybrid cloud technology like uh, kubernetes or OpenShift, so that you can manage these applications which are running in different types of infrastructure either public cloud or private cloud and similarly the databases will get the uh, types of data what we talked about here in the transportation system like uh, the driver details, route details, map details, driver performance and vehicle performance. Um, all those data will get stored into these databases. And now you will start uh, consuming those uh, data. Um, but before consuming it, you must curate the data so that the output will be perfect. So for curating, you can adopt some type of uh, AI tools and technologies. Uh, so that you can collect, organize, analyze, and infuse with the AI so that it, the data will get curated better. And once after getting that curated data, you can pass those data into generative AI tools and technologies like you know, Watson X and um, other uh, generative AI tools. 
So once after passing here, the, here is the main part comes into picture. The generative AI will learn those data, like you know the location details, roof details, map details, and driver performance, the vehicle performance, everything. And it will produce an optimized output. Suppose if the truck driver is taking that two hours to move from one location to another location, and if he's uh, consuming this much um, fuel and time, and if how many times he is stopping the vehicle, how many times he is applying the brake, and how we can improve that uh, activities, and what best route he can find it out so that he can quickly transport the dead, um, goods from one location to another location. So those type of optimized output will be produced by this generative AI so that as a transportation company, you can reap the benefit of generative AI. All right. So now let's go to another example. And if you are a cloud architect and setting up the infrastructure for your organization, you might be spinning up the compute engine or VM and you set up this network storage, all those stuff, right? And you, uh, once after setting up this infrastructure, you will uh, ask this platform engineer to install the platform technologies and then uh, your application will run on top of that, right? So you keep doing this for multiple projects in your organization. Uh, suppose if your organization is running 10 projects and uh, if you need 10 different types of infrastructure, you may be setting up all those things, right? So those data will get fed into these apl applications. Those applications can maintain that type of uh, data in your databases. And uh, if you collect that level of information, like uh, what are all the parameters and uh, key details that you are using to set up this infrastructure for your application to run, will get fed into this generative AI. And generative AI learn how this infrastructure is provisioned and uh, what kind of data being used to provision this infrastructure. And it learns and produces an output that is an optimized output that will be a set of uh, infrastructure configurations for running your applications effectively in any public cloud. So this way, you can save a lot of money in terms of like uh, network cost, storage cost, or compute cost, all those stuff. So these two are the best examples for uh, generative AI, how you can be get benefit out of it. And uh, as an organization, how you can best use of this generative AI tools and technologies in uh, upcoming days. So hope you can understand better about how you can fit in this generative AI in your enterprise architecture. If you find this video is useful, share it to your friends so that they will also get benefit out of it. Take care. Bye.